Hey guys, welcome to part four. This is the video where I'm going to answer all the questions that you asked me related to cups. My daughter's watching uh, Mary Poppins from the sofa downstairs. I let her stay up late on Friday nights, and so she's down on the couch uh, listening to Mary Poppins. So if you hear any of that in the background, there is absolutely no copyright infringement intended, but I'm not going to tell her she has to turn her movie off so I can tape this. Um, anyway, I got some really great cup questions that I think are kind of helpful ones. I think you guys managed to kind of distill it down into the questions that I see most frequently. So let's get right into these, and I'm not even going to pretend this will be a short video this time. <laughs> Um, the first three are kind of interrelated, so I'm going to kind of lump them all together. Um, for what reason did I start using cups? Have I noticed any change since starting to use re reusables uh, as opposed to disposables? What triggered my switch? What's the first cup I used? So basically this is all about my first experiences with cups, why I started and which things that I used. Um, and then of course it was how was your first experience with a cup and how long did it take you for to get it to work correctly, etc. Okay. I decided to start using cups because um, I never liked the TSS warning on the Tampax box um, and I have always needed something internal in addition to a pad that's just I've always felt more secure if I had both uh, and I didn't want to use them anymore and I was made aware I actually started using cups before I started using cloth pads. I was, I had the initial gross out factor, but I was intrigued. Um, the way I got into this is I had a friend, uh, Billy Joe, um, who I met, oh gosh, six, seven years ago now, um, when we were living in Okinawa, Japan. Um, and she mentioned reusable cloth and cups to me back then. And I wasn't ready to make a change, but hearing that these things existed made me curious and I began to read articles and such and so I discovered what cups were and what cloth pads were back then. I just didn't change back then. Um, and when we got back to the United States, um, gosh it's been almost two years ago now, um, when we got back to the United States one of the first things I did um, because she mentioned it again to me on Facebook because she and I were talking about some other things and she said you know you really need to try reusables you really do it's gonna solve your problems um, and you can hear all about that part um, I, I made a two-part video called you know come my clump to cloth story um, parts one and two and if you scroll down to the oldest videos in the channel they're video number two and video number three um, and I talk all about why I came to, to reusables in general and cloth pads in particular. All of that stuff is, is in those videos. So you can hear all the nitty gritty about that if you'd like. Um, but uh, so she encouraged me to do it and I was still completely grossed out and not even ready to, to entertain cloth pads. But I figured I could do cups because I've never been particularly squeamish about, you know, the whole tampon thing. Plus tampons grossed me out because, you know, you have that string and we know what gets on that string and you know it just they were uncomfortable to me I always had a little bit of discomfort with those um, so I was just more open to the concept of a cup also I, I really did like the the less garbage I mean the, the environmental impact being reduced is not my number one reason for coming to reusables but I'm highly conscious of it and I like that a lot um, so anyway, the first one I got was a Diva Cup, and the reason the first one I got was a Diva Cup is because that one was available to me at retailers on their website. I went and I, they had this little thing somewhere on the Diva website that said, you know, uh, retailers or places to buy or something like that, and I, so I clicked on it, and sure enough, one of the uh, stores here in my local area carried it, and it was a grocery store that I use all the time anyway. They have a really big pharmacy section, um, and I went there and I bought one. And I got the size two because, you know, I was 39 at the time and I've had a baby. And so I followed the, the recommendations on the box. Excuse me while I readjust myself. I'm just not comfortable. My shirt's all wrinkled up. <laughs> it was fine, except that I didn't at that point know that I had a low cervix. I didn't know that I needed to check my cervix height. I didn't know that cervix could change height. I don't think I was even aware that cervixes were cervixes, cervixes. I don't. I, I didn't even know if those were different for different women. I mean, I just, you know, all of us have kidneys in roughly the same place. I figured our cervix was another one of those things that's just always in the same spot. There was so much I did not know. Honestly, the first time I used my Diva Cup, 
it hurt like the dickens. Um, I don't know how I inserted it incorrectly. M my thought process, because I've thought about that since then, um, and I think I may have just gotten it in there and it was sitting at a weird angle or where there was suction directly on my cervix or something like that. I don't know, but it hurt and it hurt badly. And basically I would, I just, I was like, okay, I was determined to make this work. <laughs> so essentially I put up with that longer than I should. I was like, you know, maybe I just need to get used to it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but you know, it, I laugh at myself now, but I've had a, a handful, more than three, um, probably less than 10, but more than three people who have either through private message or openly asked me this question where they've done the same exact thing. So my first, learn from my first experience and don't make my mistake. If it hurts, it's wrong. Take it out. Don't, don't sit and don't tolerate pain. Don't tolerate real discomfort either. You're not supposed to feel it in there. It's not supposed to hurt ever. Even if you're not used to it yet, it's not supposed to hurt. It's not supposed to be uncomfortable. It's not supposed to be poking you. It's not supposed to be pulling on your insides. There's not supposed to be a vacuum sensation. There should not be intense pressure. Um, there's a lot of different reasons that those sensations may occur, but all of them are because it's not inserted correctly or it's the wrong cup for you. So don't, don't tolerate discomfort and really don't, dis don't tolerate pain. Um, I think I bruised my cervix. <laughs> Don't do that. So my first, the first time I used a cup, not good. But every time after that, I, I figured it out pretty quickly. By the end of that first cycle with my Diva Cup, I had figured it out. Uh, the problem was is that in the second half of my cycle, I couldn't wear it anymore. Um, it, it just became very uncomfortable and I would just wear pads only. Um, and then I came to find out that that was because um, it was too long. I have a very low cervix and it usually for the first couple, three days of my period, my cervix is at some normal regular height and I can pretty much wear whatever cup I want, but then it drops really low. And so for the last three or four days, it's very, very low and I have to have a lower cervix cup or I can't wear it because, you know, too much of the cup would be external and it would hurt um, or poke or just generally be uncomfortable. Um, so the Diva was not a good cup for me because it is a longer cup in the body and I just, I couldn't keep using it. Now, one of the tips and tricks that I was given from some of the lovely ladies in the various Facebook groups um, that deal with uh, reusables uh, suggested that I turn the cup inside out. Obviously, I trimmed off the stem, but um, she suggested that I turn the cup inside out because that does reduce the length a little bit. And that really was miraculous. That got me through. Um, it still wasn't ideal, but I could wear it then um, throughout the cycle. And I was able to use that while I was hunting for other cups. And I have since uh, moved on to the Schoon Cup is my favorite. And I also really, really like the Lily Compact. It has a lower capacity though, so it's not um, my go-to cup. I use the Schoon most frequently. A and the Compact is an excellent backup cup. It's also an excellent cup to wear in those last couple of days when I just really don't have much volume to deal with um, because I really don't feel the Lily Compact at all. So those are my two favorite cups because that was the fourth question was, do I use a cup? If so, which cup and why? And I use those two, the Schoon and the Lily because they both are short enough in the body or soft enough in the body that I can wear them comfortably even when my cervix drops to its lowest point in my cycle. Um, let's see. Okay, so I think that covers those first questions. Out of all the cups you have tried, which one has never leaked? Uh, well, so far, the Lily Compact is the only one that has never leaked. Um, for a while there, I had several that, that didn't leak very often. But here's the thing. My Diva never leaked on me. Not one time. Um, the, I don't know what it was about the Diva that once I figured out how to position it so that it wasn't trying to suck my insides out, <laughs> um, then... It, it just never leaked on me. I had a very, it was sized very well, I think, diameter wise. And I think the way that the rim and the shape of the cup worked were just, it was easy for me to position it correctly. But people ask this question. And what I worry about is that because the Lily Compact has never leaked for me, you will assume, or because, for example, the Maluna Classic has leaked for me, 
that you would assume that the Maluna would leak on you or that the Lily Compact wouldn't leak for you because that was the result I had. Um, all of our insides are different. Um, we're all shaped differently. We all have different elasticity. We all have different, all kinds of things that could be different for you or for me. And so the, and, and in addition to which, it also has to do with how you insert the cup, how high up it sits in your body, how easy you find it, you know. Um, one of the reasons that if a cup will leak one time and not leak another, it's because we've put it in at an angle where it's not working properly. Um, and then the next time we put it in, we get it at a better angle. And so it doesn't leak. Um, I don't know what to say for that. So the answer to the question is my Diva never leaked on me and my Lily Compact has never leaked on me. Um, my Schoon doesn't leak very often. Um, but sometimes I put it in there and I haven't gotten it in there perfectly or what have you and, and I'll have a little bit. Um, but I don't know how useful that question would be as far as advice goes because I've seen people say that their schoon has never leaked on them at all. Mine does from time to time. Um, and I've seen people say, oh, I love this cup because it never leaks and that sucker, uh, the lunette. Uh, pretty much every time I've ever used my lunette, I have a little bit of leaking. <laughs> and I don't know why, uh, but it's very, very minimal. So basically the way I offer people uh, cup uses. It doesn't matter which cup you're using and it doesn't matter how many times you've used it. Wear a liner for backup just in case. Um, if tampons are uncomfortable for someone, would a cup be the same? This is a really important question because the answer is no. Um, there are a lot of people, you have to remember that a tampon absorbs and so it pulls moisture out of your body. It takes this mucous membrane that is always supposed to be moist. It's like your lips here, the whole inside of your mouth, the inside of your cheeks, those are mucous membranes. It's always moist, isn't it? It doesn't ever dry out. And if you've ever had dental surgery where that skin gets dried out, it's really uncomfortable, isn't it? Um, same thing with your vaginal walls. It's a mucous membrane. It is supposed to be moist down there all the time. And when you put a tampon up there, it pulls the moisture out of the skin. With a cup, that doesn't happen. With a lot of us, I think, dry pulling. That's all I need to say, okay? <laughs> you get it. Um, with a cup, you will never ever have that dynamic taking place because the cup collects, it does not absorb, it does not affect the, the moisture balance inside of you. So there are a lot of people for whom tampons were uncomfortable and or painful, but cups don't bother them at all. So no. Now there are people who, for whatever reason, um, they have sensitivity issues, they have nerve endings that are frayed or whatever, or maybe they just have more nerve endings than average people. Um, and so for them, having anything internal is extraordinarily uncomfortable. So here's my recommendation. If tampons and sex have been um, painful for you in the past, be gentle when you try cups, but, but do give cups a try. Because there are people, and I've seen lots and lots of people talking about this, for whom tampons were extremely painful, or for whom sex is occasionally painful or often uncomfortable, but cups don't bother them. So, but be gentle with yourself and don't force it again. Like I said in the very beginning, if it hurts, stop, take it out, it's wrong, okay? Um, and it could be that it's because the cup itself is not a good fit for you, or it could be because it's at a bad angle. There, there's a number of different reasons. It could be the cup, or it could have be the, the, the way that you put it in, or, or whatever. But if it hurts, stop, take it out, it's not right, okay? Um, but yeah, give them a try. Even if tampons have been bad for you, just try one. Because um, there's a lot of people out there who couldn't use tampons who use cups extremely comfortably and love them. So, error bubbling. What causes this, and is there a way to prevent it from happening? Um, the the well, the productive part of this answer is um, air bubbling. For those of you who maybe have not experienced it, sometimes when you wear a cup, and I get this with my schoon, um, you'll be sitting there, and it'll feel like you leaped. You're like, oh. Whoa. And then you'll get up and you'll jet to the bathroom and you'll, you know, you go in there and you're positive that there's going to be a mess and there's nothing. And you're like, okay, what was that then? And then an hour later it happens again and you're like, oh, and then you go and you check and nothing happened. That's an air bubble. It wasn't a leak. It was an air bubble coming out of the cup. 
what happens is, and now if someone gets a, you know, a scientifically proven answer to this that is contradictory to this, you let me know. Okay, what I'm about to tell you is not fact. It is not proven fact. We have not seen a manufacturer explain this. We have not had a doctor or a scientist of some sort who's done experiments. So this is not fact. This is the consensus opinion about why air bubbling happens. Okay. Um, so you're, you, you have your cup inserted and it's collecting. Well, as the fluid comes in, air is being forced out of the cup. And if the cup is sitting in your body with a really good seal, um, you know, the, the ring is totally there so there's no leaking, then the air has to go somewhere, right? So, and it can't just go out the sides because you've got a proper seal. So it gets pushed out the air release holes on the top of the cup. And so it gets forced out and then there can be an air bubble. So as the fluid fills up the cup, the air gets forced out through the air release holes. And when enough of that happens, you will feel the bubbling effect and it feels exactly like liquid dripping down. You eventually get to where you can feel that. I now know the difference, but it's because I've used my schoon for several months in a row and it bubbles on me a lot. But I now know the difference between, uh-oh, I didn't put it in right, there's a leak, and oh, it's just an air bubble. <laughs> I know the difference now. The, the good news is they don't hurt. The bad news is, no, I don't think that you can prevent them. In fact, if you have air bubbling, it probably means that you've got a really good seal and you, you've done it correctly. <laughs> At least that's been my experience. I've never had an air bubble when the cup was leaking. When I've had the air bubble phenomenon and I've had the air bubble with my... I know I've had the air bubble with my schoon. It was either my Maluna or my, or my Lunette. I can't remember which one that I do have the air bubble thing, but I always get it with the scoon. <laughs> but when I get the air bubble, it means that I've got a good seal because it means that the, the air had to come out through the air release holes instead of being left to freely travel past the cup because if the air can freely travel past the cup and you don't get air bubbles, so can fluid. Okay, next question. Okay, this is a good one because I think this, this happens to a lot of people who are, who are trying it out for the first time. Today, I checked to see where my cervix sits. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel it, find it, nothing. I reached all the way up with my middle finger, and she says, and her fingers are quite long, and couldn't find it. Uh, so anyway, what does this mean? Will it be difficult for me to find a cup that fits? Well, what it probably means, there are two possibilities here. Number one, you were touching your cervix and you didn't notice. That's possible. Um, depending on what part of your cycle, it does get a little softer, so sometimes it can blend in if you're not if you haven't felt it before and you're not sure you're looking in the right place, um, that's possible. But what it more likely means is that you have a very tall cervix and uh, several women, lots of several, several, there are billions of women on the planet, millions upon millions of them, maybe even a few billion have a very tall cervix. So it's, it's not an uncommon thing. It's, there's nothing wrong with you. That's not bad. You probably just have a very tall cervix. And the good news for you is, no, you won't have any trouble finding a cup that fits. Now, one thing I would caution you, if you do have a very tall cervix like that, even in the, the middle, all through your, your actual period, your menstruating days, um, if it doesn't drop down during that at all, um, don't get a cup that's short. I would not recommend the Schoon. I would not recommend the Lily Compact. I would not recommend a shorty or a low cervix cup of any kind. I would recommend the tallest ones that I know of are the, I think it's called the Love Your Body Cup. I'll look it up because they spell it funny with some funky little cutesy texty type thing. I think I want to say it's you are body or something like that, which I despise. But anyway, the cups are lovely and everybody that I've talked to said that uses one. I've never tried one, obviously, because it's for it's a much longer cup. And for low cervix ladies like me, it's not a good choice. So I've never purchased one, but I'll put the name here. Um, that's one you should look at. Um, the Lily Cup by Intamina, not the compact, the, the normal Lily Cup, the original Lily Cup shape. I'll put that down below for you. And let's see. And the Diva. You should consider the Diva Cup as well. Um, those are pretty long. Those are three cups that are longer in the body. Um, and the reason I wouldn't recommend, because here's the difference. For a low cervix person like me, usually my stem, if I leave the stem intact, the stem is usually external for me because it sits that low in my body. However, for ladies with a, a much taller cervix, and that sounds like that's going to be you, 
you don't want to have to go spelunking up there. You don't want to go cave diving to find it because that can cause panic. You know what I mean? So if you get a shorter bodied cup, you have more room between the opening and your cervix than I do. So that thing could travel and go all the way up there. And in fact, that's probably what's going to happen because that's where it will sit with the greatest amount of comfort for you is right below your cervix collecting the, the menstrual flow. And then when it's time to take out, you want to have a longer bodied cup so that you don't have to go digging to find it because that can cause panic. It's like, oh my God, I'm never going to get it out. I've read some blog stories where people were like, oh my God, the horrific, the horrific experience that I had with cups. And every single one of them was a woman with a taller cervix who had the cup kind of move in and just disappear on them. And so they talk about trying to get the cup out. And oh, I mean, they're funny in hindsight, but you know that in that moment, that's not funny. It's here's this woman trying to get something out of her vagina. That's got to be panic inducing. So that's what I would caution you against. Don't get the shorter cups, get a longer one. And so I would actually recommend the Love Your Body Cup or the, the Lily Cup, because those are the two longest cups that I'm aware of. Um, and they're both high quality products. I've never heard anybody say negative things about either one of them as far as quality was concerned. Um, so look into those two. And any other of you higher cervix ladies out there who have had trouble get retrieving your cup in the past, go with those. Also, the Lunette is also a relatively longer body cup. Um, it's a roughly equivalent with the Diva. I want to say it's like a millimeter or maybe two shorter than the Diva, but the stem on the Lunette is longer. So if you put a Lunette size, uh, an, a Lunette Model 2 and a Diva size 2 next to each other, the Lunette actually looks a little bit longer because the stem on the Lunette is longer, which would make it easier for you to retrieve. Um, as someone who the cup's going to sit higher for you. Okay, I think I covered that. But no, it won't be difficult for you to find a cup that fits. The only thing that'll be difficult is making sure that you get one that's not going to be hard to remove. That's going to be the test for you. <laughs> okay, I have a very heavy flow and have tried a million different cups, all sized A, and they all leak because they're overflowing like often. Should I get a Model 2 or a B for my heavy flow? Yes. Um, the only reservation I ever have about recommending a size B for someone, like I said, um, in my, uh, the, the video that I made about cups in the beginning, you know, basically like cups 101 for people. Um, the thing, the guidelines they give you on the box, those are just guidelines. They're guidelines. They're not laws. They're not rules. They're just guidelines. And the consensus amongst cup users is that the, the heaviness of your flow is far more indicative than whether or not you've had a baby or whether or not you're 30 years old. Um, the only people I would caution against trying a larger size would be people for whom the smaller size feels bigger or there's pressure. So if you're using a size A cup and it it's and you feel it in there and it's causing pressure or it causes pain, then a size B is going to increase that. However, they're not that much bigger. You know, we're talking about a couple of millimeters here, but you can get a great deal more capacity in a size B. So if you are currently using a cup size A and you're very comfortable inserting a cup that's a size A or a size one, you know, the smaller size, if you're comfortable with cup use, and you are finding your cups insufficient for your flow, yes, get a larger size. It, there's no reason not to. Again, and I, this is, you know, we as um, modern society, we have translated our obsession with dress size, you know, our waists and our hips and all of those, you know, we want to have, we want to be slender. We want to look like fit 20 year olds all the time. We have translated that into our menstrual products. And I find that disturbing. Don't you guys find that disturbing? That's my question for y'all in this video. I just find that really, really disordered and disturbing. But we, I had some of those thoughts. The first time, I, okay, the first time I, I went and I bought my Diva Cup at the store, I resented the hell out of them telling me that I needed to buy the, sec, the, the big size. And then I stopped and I thought about it. I was like, of course 
they're suggesting that because there's a very big difference between an 11 year old's body, you know, someone who's never had a baby, who's never had penetrative sex, and someone who's 38 and has had a baby and has been sexually active for quite some time. Obviously, there's a difference, right? Well, and it doesn't have anything to do with my dress size. The diva company didn't just call me fat. You know what I mean? But seriously, so if you're experiencing that kind of an association, you know, a mental association with the size of your cup being for a bigger person and a smaller cup being for a smaller person, no, 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 no. The bigger cup, I can't even, I can't. If you have a heavy flow and the and the smaller size cup is not adequate to, to take care of your flow, get a bigger cup. Get a bigger cup. Worst case scenario, you get the bigger cup and you don't find it comfortable and you can wash it, sterilize it, and de-stash it and trade with somebody for a different one. Okay. But yes, try a bigger cup. There's nothing wrong with trying a bigger cup. There are so many teenagers out there. There are so many people under the age of 20 who've never had a baby, and quite a few of them have never had penetrative sex, who are using the bigger size cup because they have heavier periods. Go for it, man. Tell me how it goes, seriously. If, if you pick one and it works for you, please let me know. I, I'm interested, sweetie. Um, I never hear anyone talk much about doing a dry run. Is it uncomfortable? I've never had them be uncomfortable. Some people have, um, but I stopped trying to do it because I found that it's kind of pointless. Um, when you do a dry run, you're doing it at a time when you are not internally nearly as lubricated as you will be during the menstrual cycle for obvious reasons. Uh, number two, um, your cervix is going to be in a completely different place. Now, the only time I think dry runs are really useful is if you have a brand new cup that's like a, a different size than what you're used to using or a different shape than what you're used to using or if you are brand new to cup use at all. If you are brand new to cups, never used a cup before, I strongly recommend that you sit down and that you give it a go because there can be, whoa, monitor flash. What was that? I'm sorry. Um, there can be um, a learning curve, obviously, and there's also a great deal of trepidation. Um, the first time, well, there was for me, and I know from reading blog entries and talking to people that for quite a few of us, there's trepidation uh, when we are confronted with using one for the first time. And I think that it might be a little more relaxed if you try it before your period actually starts. So I think they can be useful for that. They can they can get rid of the the mystery or the 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 fear factor, as it were. They can get rid of that for you, so that you feel a little bit more familiar with it. But do not judge your cup or your ability to insert the cup based on a dry run, um, because everything is different when you're actually on when you're actually menstruating. It, it's different. Um, the cups insert much easier. The the skin and even the texture of the skin because there's more fluid, there's more mucus, there's more everything during your menstrual when you're actually menstruating. Um, so do the dry run to just to get you familiar with it. Um, but if it's uncomfortable or if you're having trouble, take it out. Wait till your period starts and then try it again and and do so knowing that it will be different. Okay. So that's the thing with dry runs. I don't think that they're, that, they don't provide you with any useful information. The only thing I think they could be good for is, like I said, helping you approach it with fewer nerves. Okay. How do you use cups in public bathrooms when there are community sinks? This is a question we get a lot, and quite frankly, it was one that I had. Um, first of all, know that you probably won't have to do that. Um, because, well, unless you're at work and you have a really heavy flow, if you're at work for eight to 10 hours, you'll probably need to change it there periodically. Um, but it's really not that difficult. Um, I strongly recommend that you get a cup spot um, and I will click over and show you a picture of a cup spot. This is a cup spot. It was made for me by a nice woman named Tiffany who knew that I was from Arkansas and I just love it. Uh, this is just a layer of cotton and a layer of fleece and then they've been sewn together. 
Now the purpose of a cup spot is after you've removed a menstrual cup, you can set it down on something sanitary, um, which is what the cup spot provides, is a sanitary place to set it down. And then after you've cleaned yourself up and you're ready to reinsert your cup, you can use the cup spot to wipe your cup down as well. And then the soiled cup spot can go in your wet bag where you would put a soiled pad or what have you. Um, they're extremely convenient and they're very sanitary um, because they can be washed. Okay, so, and you, you don't even have to have, you know, something that's cute and sewn together like that if you're not inclined to sew. Um, you can buy cup spots, lots of people do sell them, um, but you don't even necessarily need a cup spot. You can take some flannel or, you know, pretty much anything that's absorbent and, you know, a nice, something that you can wash. Um, cut it up into squares um, and just have squares of flannel or um, you could use wet wipes. And now wet wipes I find very convenient. The spots are just nice to have and I wanted you to see those because um, I'm going to start making some for myself here pretty soon and I'm going to have a stack of them um, because I just find them really convenient. And they're small so you can just toss them in whatever little wet bag or cosmetic bag you carry your, your cup and your pads and your menstrual care in, in your handbag or whatever. Um, and basically what you do is you would go into the stall and I'm going to give you a couple of different things here because there are a couple of different ways to handle this. The way that I handle it and I have only ever had to use a public restroom to change my cup twice and once was because I was on a long flight so I was in airports all day and I, I could not wait. I had to I had to go. So in an airport bathroom I had to do it and then there was one time when I just um, it was an air bubble situation actually. Um, so I didn't actually have to do it but I, I went into the bathroom fully prepared to have to deal with this and this was in a in a Walmart. So I've had to twice um, but for some people you'll have to do it more frequently but I'll tell you how I do it first because it's very simple and, and no must, no fuss. But if you listen to that and you find it inadequate, then I'm going to give you another um, answer that um, was suggested by Luna Pads. And I think it's a fantastic way to deal with it. Okay, so what I do is I have a little bag of travel wipes. You know, in, in, in the United States at least, and I know I saw them in stores in the UK and Ireland too, um, there are places, so I'm assuming that this is kind of a universal phenomenon that you can do this. They'll have a section in the store with little travel-sized products, like little travel-sized toothpaste, travel-sized um, soap and whatnot. Um, and they have little travel-sized packets of wet wipes not the kind that have like harsh chemicals for cleaning with, but you know, wet wipes, little little tiny things that you can clean your hands or whatever with. Um, and I keep one of those in, in this guy. This has lots of my stuff in it and I keep one in this guy um, that just has little, little wet wipes. So you take out a wet wipe, you pull out your cup, wipe off the cup, and then I would set the cup down. This is where the cup spot comes in handy. You put the cup down on a cup spot so that you have a nice clean place to set your cup down. And then you flush the, the wipe, clean yourself up, and then reinsert your cup. It's no big deal and it takes almost exactly the same amount of time as changing a disposable tampon used to take. Um, only this time you have a wet wipe so that, because I used to get more mess on my fingers with tampons than I did, and I would have to wipe my fingers off with toilet paper, and that was, you can do all of this with toilet roll. You don't have to have wet wipes. You can just use toilet roll. I don't like using toilet roll because I don't like, you know, especially if you get something on your fingers, you know, you use toilet paper. You know it doesn't get it out, like it'll get in the little sides of your fingernail, and it, yeah. <sighs> So anyway, I don't like the toilet paper solution. I like the wet wipe solution. That's the way I like to do it. So you go in, you sit down, you remove your cup, you wipe it off with a wet wipe, set the cup down, either on a cup spot or you could put it down in your wet bag, you know, because I'm assuming you're going to have your little bag, you're going to open your bag, get out a wet wipe or whatever, wipe off your cup, put your cup in the wet bag or put it down on a cup spot, clean yourself up, reinsert the, the cup, you're, and you're done. And then you have a wet wipe in the stall with you to clean off your hands so that when you walk out to the public community sink, nobody's going to look over and see anything, you know, indelicate on your fingers. Um, but remember, I said this in the cloth pads video too. One of the things that we do is that we assume everybody's looking at us. We we feel because, you know, if you if you walk out of a bathroom and you have and you know you have menstrual fluid under your fingernail, 
That's all you can think about. And so you assume that as soon as you walk out of that bathroom stall, everybody in the community toilet is going to be like, <gasps> they're going to see what's under the fingernail on your left hand. <laughs> but they don't. They don't. They're not looking at you. They're too worried about people looking at them. It's a universal truth and we're all, I think all of us, except for, you know, a very special few people who are just born with confidence and, you know, realistic perspective on these things. But most of us worry about that stuff. So number one, nobody's looking. Number two, if you go in there with some wipes, and if you don't have travel-sized wet wipes, you can get a little thing of baby wipes. If you carry a handbag that's too small for that, then during the days that you are on your menstrual cycle, you can, when you're actually having your period, you just get a, a, a plastic zip bag and put, you know, some wipes in that bag and keep them in your purse throughout your cycle so that when you have to use a public toilet, you have wet wipes available. That's the best way to go about it, in my opinion. Nobody will know what you're doing, and you don't have to rip open a tampon packet, so nobody in the community toilet will hear what you're doing in the toilet either. Um, so it's actually more discreet in that way. Um, now what Lunapads recommended, and I thought this was brilliant, but <clears throat> and I fully intended to do this, but I've never found myself needing to do it, and I found that wet wipes were sufficient. I didn't need any other accoutrements, so I didn't, I didn't go and buy this. But you can use, they call it a peri bottle, you can get a perineal bottle, but all, honestly just a little a little squirt bottle, a little travel size squirt bottle like this big, um, where you'd go in and before you enter the stall you fill up this little bottle that you have in your purse, this tiny little thing, just pour water into it, take it into the stall with you and it would have the little, you know, for shampoo or lotion or whatever, it has the little top so that when you squeeze it you get a stream of water. And so the Lunapads website recommended that you, you know, rinse off your cup with that and then rinse yourself off with the bottle and then reinsert your cup. And it's, it's a very bidet-like um, way to go about things and it makes sense and I'm sure it's a very good way to be very clean about it. Um, I just don't, I've never found it necessary so I don't go to the added measure of um, carrying a, a, a bottle in there with me. Um, but if that's something that appeals to you, that's a very practical solution. I actually had somebody on the internet who was like, well, everybody would be staring at me if I was filling up a water bottle. It's like, oh, honey, that's not your biggest problem if you actually think that. Nobody in the bathroom is going to give flying rodents behind about what you're doing at the sink. People go into a community toilet for a very limited number of reasons, and all of them are private, and all of them are unpleasant, and they'd rather not be in there doing it. So they're not worried about you, they're not looking at you, they're not thinking about you. What you need to worry about is how can you be both civilized and, you know, personally hygienic to take care of yourself when you're not at home with your things. Um, and it's just simpler than people think it is. Go in, take the cup out, clean it off, set it down, clean yourself off, reinsert the cup. There you go. Uh, I wanted to ask your opinion about the best and most comfortable material for a cup, silicone or TPE. What is it? Thermoplastic elastomer, I think. I'll put it down here. Um, okay, so the only cups that I know of that are made with TPE are the cups that are produced out of Germany um, and the Maluna brand, which is very, very popular and for good reason, they're very good cups. Um, I have a Maluna Large Classic, and I really like that cup. It's a very good cup. Um, because Ger in Germany, um, the go-to surgical material is not silicone, it's the TPE. Um, and so their, their menstrual cups are made with TPE as well. I don't notice a, a qualitative or comfort difference between my silicone cups and my TPE cup. I, I, I don't think there is a best or a most comfortable. Um, there's a, I've noticed a wide variety um, in appearance and texture with silicone. I only have one TPE cup, so I have no other TPE cups to compare uh, my Maluna to. Um, but no, I, I, I really don't think there's a best or a, or a worse or, you know, I, I really didn't notice. They're both high quality materials um, and, the, and my Maluna cup is very, very comfortable. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, any tips on stain removal for cups? Yes. Um, a lot of the manufacturers recommend against this for some reason, but I looked up a bunch of scientific studies to see if there was any kind of a, a problem with putting silicone in hydrogen peroxide, 
and they all said no. So I'm not really sure why the manufacturer suggests not to. I leave it to your judgment uh, because some of the manufacturers do say don't do this, but I did on my Diva Cup. When I de-stashed my Diva Cup, I wanted to make sure that I was passing it along in like new condition. And so um, I had used it for several months at that point and it no longer looked brand new. There was a little bit of staining, uh, even after sterilization. So monitor flash again. I think it's because my monitor is about to go into sleep mode and then when I touch something or move something, it comes back up full brightness and it flashes. I'm sorry about that. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, stain removal. So um, I, I washed it and I sterilized it and I could tell that it didn't look quite new. Um, and it was a recommendation that you take just the 3% hydrogen peroxide solution that comes in the brown bottle from a drugstore. Um, and I filled up a little bowl and I made sure that the cup was completely submerged. I left it in there overnight and when I got up the next morning, bam, it was, it looked brand new. Um, it looked absolutely brand new. Um, so then I just washed it again and sent it off. Um, so I highly recommend that method. Um, if you have a silicone cup, I've never tried it with anything else, so you'll have to read up on that. But if you have a silicone uh, menstrual cup, and most of them are, except for the Malunas, um, and you can read up on whether TPE is vulnerable to hydrogen peroxide, but I can't imagine that it would be if silicone isn't. Um, yeah, pop it into a hydrogen peroxide bath, let it sit there for several hours, um, and it, it'll take the stains off. What is your craziest experience using a cup? I have been using cloth for over a year and love it. I just got a cup, but I'm still hesitant to try. Okay, I have two stories. I have the one that I was going to tell you, and then I have one. I stopped the video when I, um, this just happened. <laughs> I stopped the video uh, to, to show you the cup spot picture to insert that into the video. And while I did that, I went downstairs and said hello to Cadence, and I popped in, used the restroom. And I changed my cup and I am currently using the Femi cycle because I've been trying to to get familiar with that so that I can review it for you um, and it's a, one of my newer cups I haven't had a whole lot of success using it yet um, but I figured it out well anyway so the Femi cycle cup how do I describe this you know what we're gonna save this one for this Femi cycle cycle review but I had a hilarious story this evening that I will share I will, I will share that on the, the Femi Cycle review because I need to be able to show you the cup and I can't show you the cup. Um, to illustrate the story, I have to show you the cup and I can't do that right now. So, but the other one was, I was wearing my, I have to make sure I give you the right cup here. I wanna say, I wanna say it was my skin. Yeah, no, 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 it was the Maluna. It was the Maluna Classic Large. I had a cold and I sneezed and it came out. <laughs> That's never happened to me before. I must have had it inserted correctly, like it wasn't far enough up there to be past the pubic bone. Because I've worn cups now for quite some time. I mean, it's been, oh gosh, I want to say since like um, March or April, so a year ago. It's been like a year ago um, that I've been using cups. And I've had several flus or colds or upper respiratory something or other to deal with in the last year. And that's never happened to me. I mean, I've gone bike riding with it. I've jumped up and down. I've been playing around. The, I've done all kinds of activities, yoga, that kind of thing. And I've never had anything like that happen. But I just must have inserted it incorrectly because I was laying down on the sofa watching TV, feeling sorry for myself because I was sick and I sneezed and it just came out. Oh, that was not fun, but it was funny. I even laughed at the time. I was like, did that seriously just happen? Uh, have I used sea sponge tampons? No, I have not. And the reason for that is when I was a little girl, I got um, scraped on the leg um, with coral and it got infected and it was horrible. I mean, it was really, really painful. And this was back in the late 70s, early 80s that this happened to me. Um, and I still remember it. It hurt so badly. And my leg was, because I was so young, I was so little, um, my whole leg swelled up. And so it was very, very scary. And so I'm just, and coral looks, in a child's mind, it looks a lot like sea sponges. And so in my child's mind, things that come out of the sea are dirty and bad for you. It's irrational. There is absolutely nothing dirty or bad for you or wrong with sea sponge tampons. It's my personal neurosis. 
<laughs> about things that come out of the sea. I think of things that come out of the sea as being dirty and they will hurt you. And so I just have an unpleasant mental association with sea sponges. So no, they don't appeal to me and I have not used them and I don't intend to just because that's my thing and I'm very happy with cup use. Um, but I've heard really good things about them from the people who have used them. So if that is something that interests you, I encourage you to give it a try. I think it's wonderful that they are an option out there for people. Um, I, I think they're probably a much, much better deal than tampons. So, um, you know, fiber tampons like uh, cotton or uh, rayon tampons. So give them a go. If they interest you, give them a go. But um, unfortunately, I don't have an opinion to offer you, and any opinion that I had would be tainted by this irrational skeeve out that I have with things that come out of the ocean. <laughs> okay, and oh, last question. How would you recommend introducing a 13-year-old to a cup? My daughter thinks I'm crazy for wanting her to try. And what kind of cup would I recommend? That sort of thing. Well, here's the thing, and it depends on how willing you are to buy her more than one cup if this first suggestion does not work. Um, my daughter's 11 and a half, and she's interested in trying cups. And I've gone back and forth and back and forth about whether to buy her something that's really teeny tiny, or whether to get her something that I think would be more adequate for, um, you know, a moderate to heavy flow, or, or what to do uh, with that. And the thing is, um, especially if your daughter is not sexually active, um, I think if you start with a, a small cup, because they're not used to putting things up there. They're not used to, The first thing that you should do is show her some videos. Um, and, and you know, I really would recommend for, for teenagers that you show them um, the first door on the left videos or Bree's, Bree has, uh, on, I'm sorry, Bree from Precious Stars Pads channel here on YouTube. And I'll put the link down below in the description, in the description so that you can um, go to her channel and, and find the ones. When Bree because um, Brie's a little bit older now, but the video that she made about how to select your first cup, um, and you know what, I'll put the link to that video down in the description for the, of this video uh, so that you can go straight over there and look at that. Um, it's how to choose your first cup. She was younger. Um, I think she made this video over a year ago, and, and sh her she has physically matured in, in the time since she made that video. She looked much younger uh, when she made that video. And I think that it's much more relatable for a younger person because quite frankly, I probably look just like you to, to your daughter. I'm, I'm old enough to have a daughter your daughter's age. So if she's seeing someone who's not her mom telling her that this is okay and this is normal and this is a great way to handle your period, um, it might make her more comfortable because Brie will explain to her how to check her cervix height um, and, and that sort of thing. And if that's not something your daughter has ever done or if that's something that kind of freaks her out a little bit or she's like, okay, that's just crazy, mom, I'm not doing that. Um, I think maybe from the Precious Stars Pads channel, it, it might make her more comfortable and, and let her see that this is not just some crazy thing that old people do, number one. Um, so get her comfortable with checking her cervix, checking her cervix height, um, and then explain to her that cups will not be as uncomfortable. Cups will be much easier in the long run to, to insert and remove, um, you know, and then there's the environmental part of it. And then there's the no risk of getting a potentially fatal um, reaction that turns into toxic or infection. You know, there's, there's all kinds of risks with tampons but having internal protection also keeps you from having leaks because if you're wearing a cup and a pad nothing embarrassing is going to happen to you um, so those are all the reasons to try a cup and if she goes and she watches Brie talk about how to choose a cup how to check your cervix how to be comfortable with it and Brie is very very frank about all of the topics around it. Um, she's never ever vulgar. She never does anything that I would consider, you know, silly or, and, and all of her information is good. Um, she doesn't say anything that's incorrect, you know, so I, I, I would implicitly trust Brie to teach my daughter how to use a cup. So that's my strongest recommendation. Get her comfortable checking her cervix, let her watch Brie's videos. And then I would start with a smaller cup because it'll be the first time <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, unless she's already comfortable with tampon use. If your daughter is already comfortable with tampon use, 
then I have a different piece of advice. But if your daughter has never used tampons, then um, getting her a smaller cup, and I would recommend the Maluna Classic Small um, to start with. Because if she's never inserted anything up there, it, you know, the idea of putting something into one's vagina when they've never done that before can be a little hinky. It can be a little awkward. It's like, I don't want to do this, that kind of thing. Um, and also there's less chance, especially if she's never had sex, there's less chance, you know, because if there's still an intact hymen, there can be stretching, uncomfortable stretching. Um, there can even be pain if, if, you know, she's very small. Um, so start her off with a small cup. And then, you know, if she gets used to using the Maluna small, but it's inadequate for her flow, she's having to change it too frequently. It's not, you know, working out. Then you can go ahead and, and if she's using the Maluna small with no discomfort, then you can move her up to a size A in a cup of her choosing that, that would be great. That would be my recommendation for a very young girl, especially one who's very uncomfortable with the concept of inserting anything. Um, however, if your daughter is really comfortable with tampon use already, that, then get her to check her cervix and once she knows vaguely what her, her cervix height is, let her pick out the cup that she wants in a size A. That's, or um, a size medium, I think, for the Maluna. Or a size A for any other brand that she chooses. That would be my recommendation about it. Um, and if she doesn't want to use cups, I would, my biggest thing is, even if you don't convince her to use a cup, please convince her not to use tampons. That, that would be it. Okay, so that was all of the cup questions. And so there will only be one more of these Q&A videos between now and the giveaway. And I'm getting... I'm getting really happy about the giveaway. I've started printing out the names already and clipping them out, and I've got a little drawing bag. It was this little bag that a set of sheets that I purchased came in, but it's the perfect size. And that way, you know, Lizzie can go in. It's completely blind. She won't accidentally see any text on any of them. And because we've got so many entries this time, I want to make sure that we do it really, really well. And I'm and there's going to be three winners this time, and I love the pads that I've made for, for the giveaway. Um... I don't think I've talked about this yet. I'm just going to tack this on to the end of the video here. I'm sure I'll talk about this somewhere else, So, but I wanted to let you all know. Um, the pad that I made in the How to Insert a Hidden PUL Layer, um, that pad is in the giveaway. Um, the stripey pad that I made in the How to Sew a Cloth Pad video, that is in the giveaway. And the patchwork pad that I made, um, the little block patchwork pad that I made in the video about how to make a patchwork pad that is also in the giveaway. And then um, I was gonna give away from the how to make a feature patchwork pad. Um, I was gonna give away um, both the tea pad and the um, salad pad, but Cadence tore the top stitching, not the top stitching, the uh, core stitching on, on the salad pad, so I can't, I can't give that one away because it's gonna unravel at some point and I'll have to redo it. Um, but the, the tea, um, so each, each winner will receive one of those three video pads that I just talked about. And in addition to that, they will get one of the tea canister pads. So I'm so excited about that. Um, and let's see, what else did I tell, what did I want to tell you? Oh, whatever it is, I'll tell you in the next Q&A video. So the final Q&A video, part five, um, I will either do tonight, um, right after I film this one, you'll know if I'm wearing the same outfit and have the same hair. Um, or I'll do it tomorrow or over the weekend at some point. Um, and I'll try to get both of these posted before Monday. And then we get to do drawings and we get to do giveaways and we get to do, and then we get to resume um, non Q and A videos, which I think some of you will probably be excited about. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. We're over 700 subscribers already. I'm holy mercy. Um, because I thought, surely, you know, we hit 500 at the beginning of March, so, you know, surely for the rest of March we'll be in the 500s and it'll be just a 500 subscriber celebration. Well, now we're up to 700. It's like, i got to get on the stick here. I've got to get this done um, and get back to um, doing videos that, that have been requested. So anyway, I'm babbling so badly. It's getting late. It's already a long video, so...